Hi, I'm Dana and I recently made a video that I will link here all about how I think that there's different types of autism and why I think it might actually be a good thing to recognise that. And a bunch of people in the comments then mentioned female versus male autism and I started seeing TikToks about it so now I keep thinking about it and it keeps making me really annoyed. So I thought that I'd do a little tie-in video that's just a whole video about male versus female autism and why it annoys me. Now, I really, really leaned into the idea of male versus female autism when I first got diagnosed. Like, if you go back and watch some of my older videos, I probably talk about it in, like, a very positive light and a very, like, oh, I figured this thing out. And I don't do that so much anymore. But when I was first diagnosed, I felt like it just explained so much, you know? And as someone who had just been diagnosed and didn't really know anything about being autistic, when I was Googling and searching for, like, autistic women, autistic females, autistic girls. One of the big things that kept coming up was like autism in women, autism in girls. So as far as I was aware from like the professional and medical material that I was reading, it was essentially like an accepted fact and maybe is an accepted fact that autism is very different in males versus females. And I, I just don't think it's right. And like as someone who's got like both female and male and non-binary friends, I just don't think it's true. I just it's not true <laughs> but I think it can feel like a nice idea and I think especially because going off of my own experience here and from what I've seen of like what people what you guys have said is relatable what other people have said I think it's quite common that a lot of us autistic women and autistic girls and AFAB autistic people often felt ostracized and isolated growing up we didn't feel like we had any sort of support we didn't feel like we had any sort of group we felt like we were very much like left to deal with things on our own hence forming a very strong mask so it's very very tempting to then when we're given you know a community and told like this is the thing that made you feel like that it can be really tempting to want to narrow it down further and be like oh i can find people that are exactly like me i can find the most relatable people like i'm not alone in this world it's it's always felt like it's just me being the weirdo but actually there's this whole community and then you can narrow it down and narrow it down and narrow it down until you find the people that are just like you. And the first step to doing that is to just half it and go, okay, get rid of the men. There's what, like 20% of the community is probably also like, I think that's massively changed, but like officially diagnosed, much smaller percentage of women. So it makes it much easier to be like, this percentage of people is all I've got to work through now to find like my group of people. And it, it doesn't work <laughs> but it's definitely appealing and especially when you're not finding as much like content from men which was my experience I didn't find an awful lot of like content from men until much further into my journey of figuring out who I am as an autistic person kind of thing it makes it very easy to feel like it's only women that you can relate to and and for me personally as well as someone who then started creating content a lot of my hate has come from men a lot of my rude comments a lot of my like gross comments it's predominantly men, sorry. Lots of men are great, but lots of these are gross as well. So it makes it very easy to want to narrow it down and be like, nah, just women, women are the best ones. And by extension of that, it's very easy to want to be like, oh, well, that's because our brains literally don't function like these men. It's these women's brains that we have that are just different to the men's brains and make it make our women's autism different to the men's autism. It's mm. On top of that though, I think for me as well, I've had a lot of family issues. I cut them off almost a year ago. We don't need to get into that. But it made it very easy to excuse a lot of resentment and a lot of negative feelings towards not having been picked up on as being autistic sooner because I was like 21, 22 when I was diagnosed. And being able to be like, oh, well, it's because I'm a girl. It's because I'm a woman and I have this different women's autism. So that's why my old autistic brother got diagnosed at the age of like seven. And I just got left until I figured it out myself. It's not because my parents were neglectful. or didn't pay any attention to me as a child. It's because I had this different type of autism to my brother that they couldn't possibly have noticed. You know, you can extend that to your favourite teachers in school and all the other people that were around you. Like they didn't notice it. They didn't cotton on because you've got this other special women's type of autism and not the one that they'd be taught to expect and it's again not really true but it's a sort of horrible realization to have to be like no i was very clearly autistic and people just didn't pick up on it anyway so that's why i think it's such a common thing to discuss and a commonly brought up 
topic in the autism community. You know, I think that's why it's often used to explain things and why it's often just generally kept around, much more than the and high function labels in my experience. And I dislike them both fairly evenly. But now I want to get into why I think it is that like, it's just not a thing. I'm no medical professional. As I always, always say, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a doctor of any sort. I dropped out of college. I don't realistically know anything. I Google things and watch TikToks and have my little thoughts in my little head, but I, they don't mean anything. This is a big fat disclaimer of I know fuck all, but <laughs> I do reckon a lot of things. So first off is that I think that every autistic person has their autistic traits impacted by the trauma that we experience growing up autistic. You know, whether we're diagnosed early or not, we get bullied in school, we get picked on, we miss social cues, we beat ourselves up over the things that we miss and the things that we don't do so well. Even if we're not noticed as being, as being different, we often know that we are and feel very different. You know, there's a lot of discussions and studies as to if untraumatized autistic people even exist. And I know for sure that I can point to a lot of the ways that my traits present and the ways in which I mask and things like that massively reflect on the way that I was raised and the way that my parents treated me and the way that my parents taught me to deal with the world and my emotions and being a person. And they present as autistic traits because I'm autistic, so they have to, but they are also a result of trauma. You know, they're not purely a result of being autistic. They are also a result of how I've been treated and how I've been taught and how my brain was wired as a person outside of being autistic. And each and every one of us is impacted by those things differently because we're all raised differently by, you know, even when siblings are raised by the same parents, it's at different stages in the parents' lives. So we are real, like very much all raised by completely different people. And we're all put through different life experiences. So the trauma that we experience and the ways in which we're then taught to act, the ways we're taught to mask, the ways we're taught to present ourselves to the world, all vary massively. And I don't think that someone's gender can fully dictate that. I think it has some degree of things. You know, I think that on the whole, a lot of the time, certain things will be repeated to certain people based on gender. But gender's such a, like, a weird fucky thing, which we're going to get into later, that like, I don't think it counts. You know, I think that different experiences and different things happening can also lead to the same trauma despite being from very different things and not having anything to do with gender still. Which brings me to yet another disclaimer, because as much as I say this, I do also understand that the standards with which we're raised are often impacted by which gender we are. You know, like for me personally, growing up with two older brothers, I was very much expected to keep my emotions to myself, not get angry, not get upset, just do what was needed of me. And they weren't treated in the same regards in terms of expectations because they were boys. And there, there were many a time in my childhood that I'd ask like, why can't I do this? Why can't I do this? Why is this thing happening? Are we your girl? But yeah, I totally understand that like there are some ways in which I was raised and some ways in which I will like my coping mechanisms and trauma responses and whatever else will always be impacted in the fact that I was raised as a girl. But I don't think it affects my autism all that much, you know? I think that I was going to be raised like that because that's how I was raised. And I think that there's plenty of boys and men who were raised in a very similar way and with very similar expectations in regards to different areas of their lives. And that's why sometimes our autism represents in the same way, despite us being different genders. You know, I just don't think that there's enough solid evidence of there being like a clear divide between like, this is how male autism presents and this is how female autism presents. I feel like we each have such like a mixing pool of traits that like, it's just not how it works. Like there may be the occasional thing that's slightly more common in one gender than the other, but I don't think it's taken into account also that like gender is a very complex and like massive thing. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not qualified to start talking about gender, which is exactly what we're doing now. But I think it's also a case of like, when we're not phrasing it as male versus female autism, I've seen it phrased as masculine versus feminine autism. And that I can kind of get a little more behind because I very much don't think that being masculine or feminine is dependent on what your gender is. I think it's just sort of an inherent thing that some people are more masculine and some people are more feminine and some people are a good mixture of both. 
and that's just the way that we all are as people and we all have mixtures of both anyway within that like I'm not saying anyone's purely feminine or purely masculine but like you that's what I mean like we're such mixtures and there's such different vibes and energies to it all like so little of it is actually like explained to like your brain or your body like gender is such a complex thing but we definitely can't start gen like trying to correlate you have these genitals so you have this type of brain because we know that's not how it works which is then like okay so is a trans woman going to be experiencing the same type of autism as, as i do as a cis woman or is she going to experience man's autism because of the, the way that she was raised as a boy like it just doesn't make sense when it comes down to the fact of like within the autism community there's a lot of queer and non-cisgendered people and we all experience autism in both the same and different ways it's all a massive combination of different things and I, I just don't see where the source is I don't see where the evidence is like that, that this is a thing and it really bugs me when people bring it up and I really wish people would stop <laughs> You know, as much as I've gone in on it, I, I do, I have seen the things that you see to get to that conclusion. I was there for the longest time. I was like, oh my God, yeah, women's autism is different to male autism. And as I said in my other video that I will have linked to at the start, I do agree that there's different types of autism. There's different types of autistic people. And there's definitely more to look into in regards to that. But I, I don't think that autistic people are at all split in how we present as autistic people based on gender. I just don't think it's a thing. I'm sorry, I don't. That's that. Don't. I was gonna say sue me, but like, really, please don't sue me. I don't think you could sue me over this, but if you were going to, don't. This is another video that I would love to start a bit of a discussion. So I would love it if you commented your thoughts and opinions down below. As always, it's completely fine for you to disagree with me, but it's not okay for you to be rude about it. It's as simple as that. You're allowed to have your opinion. It's allowed to differ to mine. You can't be mean. Don't call me any names. Don't like imply that I'm an idiot for not thinking the same thing as you. Just put it across respectfully and nicely and then we can have a discussion and we can like not have to live in echo chambers of our own thoughts and we can actually form opinions based on more knowledge. In the meantime though, it'd be lovely if you subscribed if you haven't already, if you wanted to like the video. Um, you can follow me on my other social medias which will be linked in the box down below and from here you're gonna have my end screen with my patreon members and my youtube memberships thank you all for signing up it's really lovely of you there you go it is your names i don't know if i have to start doing a voiceover at some point of like people that have paid enough to have a voiceover name i don't know but anyway <laughs> wherever you are wherever you are i hope you have a lovely morning evening day afternoon week month year and i will see you again in a couple of days